Hello yogis and welcome to another episode of Yin and Story. My name is Hannah and you might be able to see Felix in the corner. He's here because Yin is super chill and that's his kind of vibe. For today's class, I recommend bringing a blanket to your mat today uh, just to make your practice that little extra bit special, which is a super nice element for a Yin class. And if you don't have a blanket nearby, it's no problem. You can either choose to use a cushion or yoga block or just nothing at all, so it's up to you. Cool. So when you're ready, get into something really comfortable and I'll tell you the story all about Saraswati. All right, everyone. So take your blanket if you're using it today and unravel it so it's kind of wide. So it will take up quite a bit of surface area on your mat. And we're using our blanket for our first pose today, which is child's pose. And the blanket is purely here to provide a little bit of support, a little cozy feeling underneath your knees, the tops of your feet and your ankles. So this is how I'm going to use my prop today. If you've got more stuff, then a pillow is a really nice option to bring underneath your hips, between your hips and your heels, if you want a little more height in this pose. So feel free to play around with whatever you've got going on at home. But otherwise, take your knees wide, sit your butt towards your heels, and start to walk your hands forward, coming into our first pose, child's pose. Allow your forehead to rest gently on the mat. Allow your elbows to drop so your arms are really heavy. And here, if like me, your father blessed you with a very large nose, it's sometimes a nice idea to take a hand, stack one hand on top of the other, and use your hands as a pillow for your head. So this is a really great option as well. You can come here, or if you're okay and you just want to bring the forehead down, then go for it. Give yourself a little bit of time here to settle into the shape and find the position for you where you can absolutely let everything go. So there's no tension. Not one single muscle is holding here, except maybe if you're practicing with someone else and you really need to pass wind, shall we say. <laughs> maybe you want to hold that muscle in. <laughs> but I encourage you to release if you can. Okay. So take a few beats here to just soften. Feel your body grow heavy. Letting your shoulders relax, your arms relax. Allowing your hips to get heavy as they draw towards your heels. And starting to deepen the breath. As you find yourself here in child's pose, you might like to find this nice stretch through the back body by really breathing in to the back of your rib cage. So as you inhale, you might feel the skin across your back body expand. And as you exhale, see if you can sink even deeper into the floor. Again, inhale, feel the skin across your back body stretching as you send air into the backs of your lungs. And exhale, we get really heavy. We're going to stay here for a few minutes. And I'm going to introduce you to the goddess that I wanted to talk about today, which is Saraswati. So Saraswati came about because Brahma, who is the god of creation, he made the universe. And he created the universe and thought it needed a little bit of pizzazz. It needed something to liven it up a little. So he created this goddess Saraswati, who basically added some flavor to the universe. It said she created order by bringing on the sun, the moon, and the stars. And Saraswati is generally considered the goddess of knowledge and wisdom, and also of creative arts and sciences. So really all these things that I guess we identify with our mind as a human race. This brilliant mind we have that allows us to create and learn and invent and really know so much about ourselves. 
But deeper than that, Saraswati knows is kind of this goddess of this deep knowing, this knowledge of the true self. And you might hear a lot of people saying, you know, who are you truly? Like, what do you truly want out of your life? And so we call on the goddess Saraswati to help us in times when I suppose we're having a bit of an identity crisis, when maybe our actions are not quite aligning with our truest form, who we are deeply on the inside. Saraswati is often represented by white. So she has a white lotus with her often in imagery. She's wearing a white sari, this sort of symbol of purity, but not necessarily purity in terms of, you know, how we think of bridal purity, but more this pure essence, what we are made of, even before we are conceived and start in our mama's bellies. This little molecule, this thing that is who we are on a deep spiritual level. Take a few more deep breaths here. Again, feel the inhale move into the back plane of your body. And allow the exhale to release any tension. Find one more breath. And maybe sigh it out. Slowly press into your hands. As you lift your head, look forward and walk your hands back towards your body. You might have might need to readjust your nose back into position. And then come off of your blanket. And here we're going to roll the blanket up so that it's quite thick. I have uh, this kind of floppy blanket that I may or may not have stolen from my last Qantas flight. It's a nice blanket, but it's not very thick. So I've had to roll it up quite a few times. So come onto your roll up blanket if you're using it. And here, bring the feet together. So you want the soles of the feet and the heels of the feet moving towards one another. And then I'm sitting up on the blanket just to give myself a little extra height. It might even feel nice to slightly sort of roll your butt off of your blanket and you'll feel this kind of tilt your pelvis forward so that the shape is maybe not so intense. And here you're welcome to rest your hands on your uh, legs, your ankles. You might even again grab pillows or yoga blocks and bring those underneath your knees if you feel that your knees are just a little too floaty in space for your liking. Nice. And then here, inhale, get nice and tall. And as you exhale, any amount, you can begin to fold yourself forward. So I'm just going to let the palms of my hands face up, but you can choose whichever feels best. Allow your spine to round here, allow your head to hang low. And then again, you can close your eyes. We're going to be here for a little while longer, learning a little bit more about Saraswati. So in our last yin and story, we talked about poverty. And I explained that poverty was sort of like the Michelle Oh no, the Kelly of Destiny's Child. And if she's the Kelly, then I'm going to say Saraswati is Beyonce. So Saraswati is this very cool goddess who represents a whole lot of things. And one of those things, in fact, is music. So maybe she is the OG Beyonce. <laughs> and Saraswati has four arms. And in her hands, each hand holds... A different object. And the first object is a book. 
The second object is mala or uh, mala beads. So you might have seen these if you've ever been to India or Southeast Asia, or if you're familiar with the rosary in Catholicism. So she has these mala beads. She also has a pot of water. And then the last thing that she carries is a musical instrument called a veena. And these four items represent four different symbology or symbols of Saraswati. So the book she holds is an ancient yogic text. And in it is said to basically have the secrets of how to reach enlightenment, right? So it's a handy book to have around. <laughs> And she has this because a lot of what Saraswati represents is this, like I said, this true knowledge of the self and not the descriptions we give ourselves throughout our lives. So not, I am a wife, mother, son, father, boss, employee, whatever the labels are. There are many, 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 thousands and thousands. But instead, who we are at our truest, deepest form. And this is not generally a question that a lot of us are able to answer. So she has this book, this sort of book on the how to reach enlightenment. It's a nice handy book to have. <laughs> and then the mala is again this sort of, this object that represents meditation or this self-study. And in yoga, we call that svadhyaya. And then she has the pot of water. And water is a big symbol for Saraswati, which I won't go into too much today, but this water is the representation of her purity. So just like all these white items that we have associated with her, we also have uh, water, which is an ultimate cleanser. Cleans away the dirt. And if you think of water rushing through a crook or a bank, it can clean away. It can even, you know, over time, deteriorate rocks and these things that have been around for millions of years. So water is quite powerful. And then the final object is this vena, which is this kind of representation of her involvement in the creative arts and sciences and sort of how our knowledge has been able to translate into wonderful things such as music. Find a few more breaths here as you allow your head to soften, your shoulders to roll forward. You might have noticed as you've stayed here in this folded position that you start to get closer and closer towards your feet. And of course, this is not the goal of yoga practice, but it might just be something that you notice as you stay here for just a little longer. Stretching through the back plane of the body, really moving into the fascia finding space for just two more breaths here. Inhale, exhale one, inhale, and exhale two. Slowly press into your hands to walk yourself back up. And just take a moment here to sit up tall again. Maybe you close your eyes. Noticing how you feel. Lovely. And then from here, take your hands behind your knees, draw your knees together, and we're going to move onto all fours from here. So into a tabletop position. And take your folded up blanket with you. We'll take it to the right side of our yoga mat. So from all fours, we're going to move into sleeping swan, or if you practice yoga, you know this pose as pigeon pose. So we'll shoot the right leg back behind you, and then bring the knee forward, plant it behind the wrist as the right foot goes out to the left. Nice. And then here, if your butt is quite high off of the floor, this is where it might be a nice idea to take the blanket and pop it just underneath your uh, right hip. And you can again, stuff as many things under there as you need. 
Beautiful. And then tuck the back toes underneath you. So tuck your left toes, lift your left knee and shift your left hip forward and then bring the knee down, untuck the toes. Beautiful, we'll take an inhale breath here. And as you exhale, come down any amount that works for you today. So you can stay on your forearms. If you've got a block, maybe you pop that underneath your head. You can also make a little patty cake, patty cake with your hands, rest your forehead. Or if it feels okay for you, you can come all the way down. So the sleeping swan position is also really relevant when we're talking about Saraswati. So often imagery of her is seen where she's riding a white swan. And again, we come back to this idea of purity and the swan is just another symbol of that. But the swan is relevant here in terms of this deciphering of what is good and what is bad and what is truth and what is just a facade. And you might think, what the hell has a swan got to do with <laughs> the difference between the truth and falsities? Well, they say that if you poured milk into water, a swan, if it took a gulp, would be able to separate the milk from the water. And so that's this symbology of the swan. And why it's involved with Saraswati is because she is all about finding this knowledge, this divine wisdom, this really true form of yourself. And this one is about figuring out the same kind of idea. So, I mean, for example, you might have hit a certain age, right, where the people around you, maybe family members or friends, are starting to tick off life goals whatever those things might be. And you might start to think, ooh, I also need to start ticking off these life goals. But maybe there are circumstances where you might want to tick off these life goals, but not quite yet. Or it might be that you actually don't want to do these things just because you've been told to by society. And really... Saraswati and this idea of truthfulness is helpful here because if you go deep enough through your self-study, whether that's meditation or journaling or whatever you're into, whatever helps you to really think about your true self, your true nature, and if the answers to those questions don't quite line up with what society has told you or expected of you, then you're really tapping into your Saraswati goddess power. And I'm not saying that just because other people do things that we shouldn't. Obviously, there are some really great things that we do as societies and cultures, and they're wonderful, and we want to keep doing them. It's just an example. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's work-related or friendship-related. All right, sleeping swan is quite an intense pose. You're probably feeling this deep into your right hip. So we're going to stay here for three more breaths. Notice what your brain started thinking when I told you how many breaths you had left. Maybe you're super relieved. See if you can stick with it. Just one more inhale here. And exhale. Press into your hands. Slowly walk your hands back towards you. Tuck your left toes underneath you, shift your left knee forward, and then swing the right knee back and come into that tabletop position again. You can move your blanket over to the left side. Nice. Maybe here, let's take a brief cat-cow, just between sides. So inhale, drop your belly, shine your heart forward, roll your sit bones up, and exhale, press into the hands, chin to chest. One more like that. Inhale, drop the belly, look forward. And exhale, look towards your belly button as you round your spine. Nice. Inhale, come back to center. And then this time we're going to send the left leg back behind us. And then swing the left knee behind the left wrist and the left foot off to the right side. Again, you can grab the blanket or pillow or whatever you want to use to bring underneath your left hip this time. 
to create a bit more space. Beautiful. And now tuck your right toes underneath you and shift your right hip forward. Drop the knee and tuck the toes. Take a full breath in as you lift your chest and then exhale to come down any amount, whatever works for your body. Remembering that this side might feel different to the other side and that's totally fine, it's no problem. We don't always have to do everything equally on both sides. And just a note here and apologies that I didn't mention it on the other side, if you have any kind of electrical pain or heat in your knee joint, then please always avoid this kind of pose. And if you've been practicing with me for a while, you sort of know that anyway. But if you're new and your knee is firing up here, then first click your toes into the mat. And if that's not quite relieving it, then come out and you can do the same sort of position on your back. Or just skip it all together. Relax your shoulders, relax your face. Nice. Maybe you can reflect on some of the things I've discussed in regards to Saraswati and why she's maybe one of the coolest goddesses in the whole book. You know, really all these things that she represents, including arts and sciences and creativity and knowledge. So if you're a college student or you've gone back to school, she's a good one to have in the back of your mind, can help you to find your kind of flow state. Maybe, who knows? <laughs> Notice if you're gripping in your left hip, can you breathe and release? Letting everything soften, no tension here. In your sleeping swan, your vehicle for Saraswati. Two more breaths here, inhale. Exhale one, inhale. Exhale two. Nice. Slowly walk your hands back up. Tuck your back toes. Shift the knee forward slightly and then send that left knee back. Coming into your tabletop position. Walking the knees forward and we're going to swing the legs to one side and come all the way down onto our backs. Now I'm going to use my blanket one last time. This time as a pillow for my head. For no other reason than it's just a little luxurious extra. <laughs> so come on down. Rest the back of your skull in your blanket or maybe you've got a soft pillow that you can use here. Plant your feet flat on the mat. And the final pose we're going to take today is happy baby pose. So first bring your knees in towards your armpits. Squeeze your knees in. And then from here, start to flex your feet up to the sky. Now, if your hips are really tight, it might be nice to just hook the arms behind the knees and keep flexing the toes. Or you can, if you've got the space today, you can grab a hold of the feet and then simply let the knees fall in towards the armpits. And you can close your eyes here. Find space in the back of your body. You feel the whole back body connected with the mat. And you might even roll the tailbone forward slightly so you feel this little kind of pop of air underneath your low back. Nice. And maybe we can think about happy baby in relation to Saraswati by being this real blank slate, right? You're not already being shaped or molded by any ideas or culture or TV or Instagram or whatever it is. You're this fresh, new, totally pure being. And although we are no longer babies, maybe you're 
channeling your baby vibes in this shape. And maybe you can think of yourself here and what it would be like to wipe the slate clean. Who are you without all the things that you've told yourself that you are, all the labels you've given yourself? And those are washed away. And all the things you've been told to be or do are washed away. What is it at the very depth of your core, the very center of your truth? Who are you? It's a big question, no? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have the answer for you. But maybe it's worth meditating on or riding a swan through the lake and all of a sudden you'll get all these ideas <laughs> about it. Let's stay here for three more breaths. Inhale. Exhale one. Inhale. Exhale two. Inhale. And exhale three. Release your feet or untuck your arms from behind your knees. Hug your knees into your chest for just a beat here. And then roll to one side, closing your eyes in this fetus position, this symbol of new life, of rebirth. So here you are, you've wiped everything clean. And in just a second, we'll rise in our new truth. <laughs> so press into your hands. You can bring that blanket with you as something to sit up on as we come into a comfortable seat to end our practice. So find any seated position that works for you today. Take your hands together in front of your heart. Take a deep breath in as you lengthen through the spine. Smile. And exhale to bow the chin to the chest. Maybe you find out what you are truly meant for. Bring a gentle smile to your lips as you lift your chin and open your eyes. I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you're able to go deep into who you truly are. And if nothing else, I hope that your hips feel nice and open. <laughs> Have a wonderful rest of your day or evening. Namaste.